Hey, I'm James. And I'm Caroline. We're bringing not one, but two cars to the SEMA show this year. We have eight weeks to get these cars ready and get them on a transport headed out west. But in order to get this done, we gotta stop talking and get wrenching. The last time you saw us, we didn't even have engines in either car. Crazy, I know. Now we have four short weeks before both of these cars get on trucks to be shipped across the US for the SEMA show in Las Vegas. Since we have a lot to do in a short amount of time, here are the next four weeks summed up in one video. Now that we have the engine bay painted in the skull cloths, what we're gonna be doing is pre-assembling our engine with all of our accessories on the front before we sink it into the engine bay. It makes things a little easier because it's really tight quarters in this engine bay. So what we're gonna be using is the Complete Holly Mid-Mount Accessory Drive Kit. And this kit is one of the coolest kits I've seen on the market today. It has its own mount here, which is the water, ha uh, water pump housing. And here's your water pump. It's like an LT1 type water style water pump. You have your alternator, you have your air conditioning, and it comes with your lower pulley and your power steering pump. It's very, very modern looking on this engine and it's very functional. So it's gonna make our job much easier. We may sound like we know what we're doing, but trust me, we are just regular people who lose hardware and spend an hour looking for that long lost washer and even read torque specs wrong. <laughs> Not foot pounds, inch pounds. Hey, convert that. It does not. This is old school. I've got one next door tomorrow. Yes. While James was cranking out the work on that accessory system, I was next door juggling many different tasks. I literally feel like I am the epitome of procrastination. James has pretty much put a deadline on us, which is good. I'm a little annoyed by it, but it's good. Uh, to get both engines in both cars by Wednesday, and Wednesday is tomorrow and my engine is still in pretty much complete disarray. So this is what we're working with. All the parts are in here. Uh, I'm currently powder coating as we speak, but honestly, I feel like I'm not powder coating fast enough because I'm not only powder coating parts for the Speedle, but I'm also powder coating parts for the Skull Clops. And also this evening, I need to move the Speedle over into the paint booth and paint the doors. I tore off the old logos and put new logos which i'm super happy with but they have to get cleared over and the whole door has to be redone so i have to get that thing over there spray it tonight so that i can bring it in here tomorrow get it ready for the engine and the transaxle and i feel like i feel like i'm spiraling james i know is super stressed out but he's also just kind of looking like he's just like Oh, this is nice. Butterflies and rainbows. And I'm like over here totally stressing out. Well, it's been like three years since I painted this car. Uh, and I'm crossing my pinkies that I will hopefully be able to match the flake a little bit or, you know, just try to make this look good. I'm not a professional painter, but I really do love painting and getting my technique better. And even if it comes out like moderately okay, I'll still be proud of it because I did it and it's one more step on my painting journey of maybe being half decent one day. But we're here burning the midnight oil so uh, I need to stop talking and get painting. James and I can most definitely agree on the fact that we will be the first in line to make fun of ourselves. When I watch this footage back, I get a kick out of how you can tell how much sleep we haven't gotten based off the fact that we look like drowned shop rats. Glamour definitely comes second or even third here at HH Wheels. As I'm watching myself paint, I can definitely tell I understand the technique, but I really need to slow down and hone in on what I'm actually doing. Since I was trying a new gun tip combo, I did end up having a couple of runs, which we'll just have to address later. And we're back to powder coating. We made a dedicated video on how we powder coat, so if you're interested in learning more about our setup, you can just check out that video right after this one. Since falling behind in powder coating and still awaiting some of the parts to be delivered for the Speedle engine, we just decided it was best to go all hands on deck with the Skull Clops and at least get that engine in the car. Although I don't seem to feel like I'm making any headway on the Speedle just yet, James, Alex, and I teamed up to make some more progress on the Skull Clops. For starters, we replaced the power steering control valve and started prepping for that transmission. So James, I'm sure you remember this, quite fond memories of this heavy piece of history. Well, that, didn't get, that didn't get scrapped? No, even though you did call it scrap iron. Now it's scrap iron. We have this, we've had it the whole time. 
I remember seeing in the video you uh, taking me out of the car, actually. Yeah, yeah, I did. Oops. A little this to a little bit of that. I love how um, perfectly square this is. Could you please put that back on the scrap pile? So I thought it went in like this. And there was another down here. So it seemed kind of low. Yeah, that's that's too low. So I started looking at it, and there's actually holes for these two holes to bolt up in on top of this plate. So this actually goes like this and bolts in like that. James, our <laughs> this, this makes more sense anyway. James, our resident Corvette expert, right here. Yeah, I'm uh, slowly but surely uh, understanding what these C3s are all about. So, do you think you've earned the Reebok yet, or no? Reebok? I'm a Nike man. Yeah, but you need jorts, Reebok, and a mullet to be driving these cars. I have to do the mullet and the Nikes. You know me. Me and Jordan go way back. Oh, they have to. They're, they're going to be black Nike high tops no, with no, no, some skinny no, no, jeans. No, 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 no. Yeah, skinny do I have jeans. To, do I have to explain Corvette culture? With the mullet. Skinny jeans and the mullet. No, we're gonna be we're gonna be I'm gonna be my Corvette owner. It'll be funny. Trust me, those skinny jeans make me look funny. I look like that fucking dog with the skinny jeans on. I do. <laughs> Why does this have so much play in it? Needs more grease. It's never been greased. <laughs> you never greased it? We never greased it when we were in California. <laughs> uh, we didn't put any miles on it. We'll be fine. Minor problem. Man, look at that. Look at how cool that is. It's pretty official. So nice having the real deal stuff. It's weird when you do things right, isn't it? Well, just imagine how much time this would have saved me, Caroline. I love how you're trying to blame me for this, but it was definitely a team effort, including Jim. Jim was the, <laughs> the culprit there, throwing everything. He had to clean everything every day. Because I'd be put away. We didn't have any away. time to look at that pile we laid out until. Nope. Not at all. In his defense, he had just cleaned that entire garage. So, he hadn't seen it clean until like a week before we got there. So he was basking in the glory of it until we were to really ruin it, like we did. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't make things better. Trying to help him out. So how good does it feel to be a Corvette owner? Well, when it's driving, it's fantastic. It's really a lot of fun. I mean, this thing is very difficult to keep on the road when you're really getting in it. <laughs> So the characteristics of this car really keeps you on your toes and you have to stay, you have to constantly drive it if you're really driving it hard. And I think that's one thing that's really fun about it. When it's in this state, it sucks ass. <laughs> It looks oddly familiar to me. Oh, I wonder why. Only cleaner. Yeah, I don't know. There's still a pile of sawdust under the car. Does that count as cleaner? Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just looking at the sawdust. That Vallejo used transmission in that nice clean engine bay. <laughs> <laughs> 3,000 mile away transmission. South Carolina James. Hey, we're doing it. And the dipstick fixed underneath the hood. Check that out. You excited to see this thing get in the car? No, it actually looks really cool. I can't wait to have all the accessories on the top, like the snipers, and it's gonna look meh. Are you well, excited? The quicker this is all on, the quicker we can get those sniper kits on here and you know, we get this thing fired up. So I am very excited. Who's ready for this nice little small block to go in? <laughs> no, we do have power tools. I like doing this, but that's what tells me how much tension's on it. 
I speak for both James and I when I say that we really thought bringing even a single car to the SEMA show was going to be a far out goal for us. We really thought it would be at least a five to 10 year plan given our skill level and the fact that we had to build a relationship with the company that trusted our abilities. So we just wanna say thank you to Cerakote and Prismatic Powders for supporting and trusting our hobby level skills. And thank you, you guys are helping fuel our goals and shenanigans here at HH Wheels. Every like, comment, and follow helps us create better content and bring you even cooler cars for us to wrench on. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? I'll give you like 22. Now you tell me. Wait, you just looked it up and it was 30. It is 30. Is what a stock intake on a stock small block Chevy is. What is the torque specs for the sniper? They don't have one. Okay. Go I'm 20. 25. Go 25. Okay. You want me to just, I can just do it with this wrench because I have a built-in torque wrench right here. It's no, called. That's called a dislocated elbow, James. In, no, it's called. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Look at that scratch on my arm. Where did that come from? Hmm. Well, let me get the torque wrench going here. Loosens it. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, that's that's perfect. 25. Try that one. <laughs> Try that one. I, I guarantee you it's 25. Which one? Right here. Perfect at 25. Watch. See? Are you, are you stripping it? No. <laughs> These hands right here are genius. I don't need no beeper, you know, beeping, telling me when the torque specs are done. I just do it. I just do it. Did you say you're cooking me a Pop Tart? I'm not kidding when I say we are literally so jammed on time that we are simultaneously eating, working, eating, working for our lunches rather than actually taking a moment to sit and eat. The funny part is James actually caught it on camera. For those who are not familiar with our motor for the Skullclops, it's a 3D3 stroker small block Chevy originally from our race truck. It's got a set of aluminum heads with a Holly Sniper 2x4 setup along with the corresponding 2x4 sheet metal intake. It will be a peppy little beast perfectly fit for the Skullclops, just in time for the SEMA show. Now we may not have made our self-set deadline to have both engines in each car on one set day, but we made great progress for the Skullclops, so it's time to go back to my shop. At this point, putting anything back on the Speedle feels good. It genuinely seems like we have only taken things off or apart, so reinstalling the transaxle already feels like a huge step in the right direction. Once we torqued the transaxle and popped the shocks in, it was time to tear things apart. More specifically, my front end. You know, I really didn't think it was possible to get sick of tearing a car apart, but honestly, I was pretty much at the end of my rope on that one at this point. Well, now that we have the whole front end torn apart, I have some exciting new stuff from Empy. Something that I was really excited about was the fact that we got some new control arms. Drum roll, please. Nice. Look at that. I am very excited to put these on the car. I have done the ball joints before, um, but they are truly blown out. And to have a successful road trip, I think having good ball joints really helps. But we're also here doing all the shocks and everything. Why wouldn't we go the extra step? So MP makes it super easy. You just can order these um, through your dealer and they come with the ball joints pre-installed, which is sick. This is just easy, especially with the fact that we're under a huge crunch. It makes more sense to buy them this way. So I don't have to go out there and Find someone to press them in. A one, a two, a three. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a tipsy top? Let's find out. One, two, three. I think stack these very well. A big thank you to MP for helping us get the Speedle set up for success with all of the suspension and brakes. I will have all of the parts that we use listed below along with a link to help you find your nearest MP dealer. Send it on, sir. You need a straight cut on the side for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It was an extra piece of sheet metal. Sir taps a lot. <laughs> You'll make my job so much easier. Take another one. Yeah, if you know. take note, you need a cap installation tool to come with this kit. Nothing but drama here at HH Wheels, huh? Right. <laughs> That's right. He's a wife and you can come here and deal with all the strife. Yeah? What does strife mean? He needs a wife and you can come here and deal with all the all your strife. All of my strife? Is that just how it is to you here? This toolbox is killing me. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Somebody please donate Caroline a fully loaded toolbox. Oh, ho, ho. can't go your way at all. I am on the side. I'm on the okay, center. Bring that. I know. Okay. So don't this do entire. It. Well, I think I think we may have just ruined this anyway. Yeah. Take it out. We have damaged this radiator enough where I'm not even going to risk trying to pressurize it. So. Well, that's disappointing. This was quite an unforeseen setback, but thankfully we were actually able to snag a brand new cold case radiator at the last minute with only a two day delay, rather than driving two hours away with an even longer wait time. The bright side to this hiccup is that we're getting better cooling and fitment from the cold case radiator rather than the spare knockoff that we just had laying around on hand. Lots of great parts on this 78 vet that we got, like this overflow tank that fits up underneath the fender. So I'm stealing this for the skull cloths because we don't have an overflow tank for it. Uh, the only problem is it doesn't just unbolt and come out. I've got to unbolt the air conditioning, get that completely out of the way, which we're going to strip off this car anyway. So it's not a, not a big deal, but I got to loosen all these bolts and get this thing out of the way in order to get the overflow tank out. Did you only paint half of that? I'm really tired. Why are you giving me a hard time? What? It's literally night and day. Now you see the ugliness. You still see things. <laughs> now you don't. See? Wait, Hola. wait, there we go. <laughs> Was it worth the amount of time not spraying that? Yes. Oh, you ran out of paint. 100%. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. I just love that we actually have an overflow tank so we won't be like when we're pulling in the SEMA, we won't be spraying all our or overflow all over the place. You don't miss that um, Deer Park water bottle or whatever it was? Yeah, yeah. It looks perfecto. Like it was supposed to be like that, except you can't see it, your fluid. Zoom, 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 zoom. This is the face of a tired man. Hmm. 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 We put the hood on the car just for a quick test fit. This is really tight. This, this front feed line for these uh, sniper kits. And this is definitely the wrong angle. It's not gonna, it's not gonna give us any clearance on the hood that's already cut out for this type of setup. But the setup that it was cut out for was much smaller back in 2011 with like a couple of Edelbrock carburetors. These are much wider and the feed is going to come out much wider and it's going to be a problem for us and i am definitely not going to cut into that hood so we need to move this line towards the back side of this sniper kit on the front this may look cleaner also if we do it that way It'll i think eliminate a lot of the stuff up front that's sick that's going to solve all the problems right there yeah that looks beautiful i'm so glad you got long arms so we're going to need some more fittings Pearls. They don't skip on packaging, that's for sure. Hard lines right here. Yeah, and we have the crush, uh, barrel crush fitting for that one too. So we have enough to do that and the speedle with no problem? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's a plan. Let's do it. Earl's included a nice set of jaws for the vise. And that means we're not gonna scratch up this set of fittings all the time until we put them in the car or give them to James. Whoa, how cool is that? Let's make some, let's make some hoses. You are a hose. 
Okay. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, yeah. That'll fit under the hood perfectly. Those snipers are gonna be... Wah! Wah! So unfortunately, when you burn the midnight oil, these kinds of mistakes can happen. As much as I'd like to sit here and act like this wasn't a problem or that I didn't do this and I made a perfect paint job, sure, I'd love to do that, but that's just not the reality of it. Unfortunately, just didn't do it. I, I did not knock this out of the park, unfortunately, but it's okay. Thankfully, it's paint, it's fixable, time to fix it. After licking my wounds, sanding down my car, and fixing the whole paint debacle, the parts had finally arrived for the motor and it was time to get back to work on it. Or so I thought. Unfortunately, I ended up needing more parts, so the motor got backburnered yet again to hopefully get something else done on this Beetle in the meantime. Okay, the moment I have been waiting for for literally three years. So I've known for quite some time that I definitely wanted to put a fuel cell on the Speedle at some point, and obviously this was a very good time to do it. I was pretty dead set on getting an aluminum tank, and thankfully Holly had exactly what I needed. And I also decided to accompany it with their Easy Level Sender because unfortunately the stock Volkswagen one just was not going to fit for this application. And to finish it off, we installed their upgraded billet cap, and it looks phenomenal. Once the prep work was done on that fuel cell, I had to go back to the car and finish doing all the final touches of adding the fuel pump, running new wiring, adding a filter, and then unfortunately this happened. So yeah, the power went out. Not really sure why, but I really had no time to waste, so I just had to make some flashlights work and I had to keep wrenching on this car because we were running very short on time. Once we were back up and running, we had to finish getting all the fuel lines run and getting all the prep work done to get the fuel cell in because without this, we are pretty much dead in the water. I really have to compliment my dad here. He made this thing fit not only perfectly, but it just looks so darn good. Thank you so much, James, for making this awesome. And honestly, I know you didn't want to do it, but it turned out really awesome. Now we're at the point where we can pretty much wrap up the engine and get it ready to put back in the Speedle. But I have to put in a new rear main seal because unfortunately this one has just been leaking over the last couple of years. And now's my chance to do it before I'm probably hopefully never going to take this engine back out for a while. So let's take this clutch flywheel everything off. I've had these for, I don't know, a couple years. They've been just fine. These are some empty axles and I Cerakoted them. Here's a little get wrenching tip for you. When you pull these axle bolts out, there's a, about a 99% chance they're going to be disgusting. The one thing that I recommend doing is taking all of them, including the little plates they come with, and toss it into a little vat of gas and let it sit because the gas will literally eat all of the old grease, grime, nastiness that's all over them off. And then all you have to do is scrub them a little bit, get inside there with a pick as good as you can, and then paint them. And that's it. Although we have a common goal with both cars, it really felt off not working together on the same car. I know it may sound kind of weird, but after doing all this work on the Speedle, I kind of miss working on the Skull Clops with my dad. One of the important things that I want to do with the Skull Clops is actually show off the original design. Even though it's all smacked up and messed up, uh, I want to be able to show to people the nose that they built in, within the 72 hour period is quite elaborate and really crazy. This thing looked really, really cool, I think, when it was first built. It looks terrible now. All of this has been busted off from it being taken off a trailer and the whole nose being pulled off. Uh, so it, what I'm trying to do in, in order to show it and tell its story the way it is, is to preserve it the way it is. So 
what I'm doing is fiberglass resining all of this stuff. You know, sure, it's going to be replaced. We're going to redo this nose. We're either going to take all this off and put a, a cooler nose on it, or we're going to get this rebuilt the way it was and the way it was designed in the beginning, restored back to what Skull Clops was when it was first designed. I'm going to go ahead and put another coat of resin on before I go home tonight. Now it's starting to show some rigidity and probably be pretty durable on the ride home. The moment we have all, or at least I have been waiting for, the fire up of the engine in the Speedle. I feel like I might throw up a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, are you hooked up? Yeah. Alright, turn the fuel pump on and give it a second. The Speedle is alive. That's exciting. Way to go, Caroline. I don't always show it, but I'm super proud of that girl. <laughs> oh, he's so <laughs> I was like, if James doesn't come over yet, he's probably asleep. I've been in here praising you. Like, how proud I am of both of you. <laughs> like, Dude, we were over there talking shit. <laughs> I wasn't even saying anything. You want a hug? Um, no, I think I'll pass. Maybe later. I'll give you one later. Well, it runs. Yes, it does. It, it sounds, sounds good. Sounds really good from here. The moment has arrived. I can open this box. I told myself I wasn't going to open this. A, because I don't have the other one to this pair. And I also was using it as an incentive to finish putting the motor in the car and getting it running, which it does. And it's like, what? The middle of the night, literally, when I'm opening this, but I'm so excited to open it. Let's open it. We got a shipment from Status Racing. Some of the most customizable racing seats, I think, in the industry. Unfortunately, I only have one, though. FedEx put one on a different truck and put this one on another. I don't know. Dude. I really can't thank Status Racing enough for helping me create my dream seats for the Speedle. They are even more incredible than I'd expected they'd be. If you really want to get some killer custom racing seats for your vehicle, I highly recommend Status Racing. They are the most customizable and honestly kick ass. I'm going to go ahead and take this thing out and we're going to steal the spring off the 78 vet that I got for the parts car. We're going to put a stock spring in here. It's going to lift the car up quite a bit, but it's going to be more functional for goofing off and having fun. This just goes to show how easy the suspension is. is to work on. Ooh. <laughs> well, this is interesting. So the spring actually broke because the mounting unit is, is about probably a good 12, 14 inches wider than this area, which is all we mounted it in. And this spring was not supported enough and it broke, it cracked. Look at this, fiberglass and it's completely ruined. So yeah, we there's no way we could use this. This is just gonna deteriorate. Where I clamped it, it, it just cracked. I really wasn't sold on the idea of a parts car for the Skull Clops, but James ended up proving me wrong on this one. Okay, I cleaned up our spring. Ugh. Now, if you remember the spring that we took out of the Skull Clops when we first got it, it had a air suspension in it. Airbags were not functional and holy crap, this is heavy. Um, but that spring had one leaf that they were using across to hold the whole suspension together and it wasn't functional and we ended up using that fiberglass spring which was about a quarter of the weight of this thing ah, ooh, okay that's easier um so we clean this up and um we're gonna install it in the skull clops so another weird thing is these are the bolts these are the bolts that i took out of the 78 corvette and these are the bolts that fit in the 76 
which is the skull claw. Are there different rear ends that went in? Are these heavier duty? Is this a heavier duty or rear end? Heavy duty rear. <laughs> a more heavy duty rear end, yes, in the 76 than in the 78. So I don't know, I'm not sure. I know the horsepower was crapola on that car out there, but it was crapola on the 76 too. So this is so weird. It's been it. You're in the shot. <laughs> it's the only spot I can be when you have me there. And since this spring was not an exact fit, of course we had to do some much needed modifications to make it work in the 76. You have one bolt. Come on, man. Nope, not enough. I can't move it anymore. Man, that thing doesn't move at all, does it? No. We have to clearance both of them. Probably. Back to the drawing board. A few more tweaks and they were able to get it to fit, but then they ended up doing this. Hey, check that out. <laughs> three swing gloves. Good up to three seconds. Really glad you're doing it. Thanks. Did you get all the bolts out? Yeah. It comes out. Listen, Caroline did it like six times when we were in California, so. Yeah, just yank. Yeah, I'm caught over here on your frame. I don't think you got all the bolts out. Oh, you Which do? I do. You do have all the bolts out. I really wish we could get away with not putting that in. But I don't think that'd be a really good idea not to put the heat shield back in for the fuel tank. Heat shield for a fuel tank, you don't need that. So much more room for activities. Woo, woo. Don't do that. Yeah, that, that's 1978 I'm tasting. We're gonna take a brief moment to appreciate Alex because we literally could not have gotten any of this done without his help and the fact that he hangs out with us, we still have no clue as to why. So thank you, Alex, we love you and we hope you still wanna hang out with us after this. Nice new shiny spring on all that old rusty crap. <laughs> Good enough. Brake light be really fun trying to figure out how to take those out. Yeah, I don't really know. It wasn't a permanent thing, was it? Yeah, because these are your taillight wires. Oh, dude. Well, that's going to be fun. Another Car Warrior special. <laughs> so what they did was... They took double stick tape, put it on the seal, and then popped it on there um, right inside the hole. I mean, I'm probably going to put it right back exactly the same way because I don't have any time to make it a, a better way. James was pretty dead set on recoding his headers, which I really don't blame him, but unfortunately we just don't have the time to pull off Cerakote to have a full cure, so I had to give him the next best thing. DHT Flame Proof. 1300 to 2000 Fahrenheit. So that's pretty hot. These came out so nice. I am so happy we were able to achieve some sort of coating on these. Now we can pop them in the car and get that motor running. Let's go see what Alex is up to. So we have two power wires coming from the battery, signal wires from the Holly Sniper system that will trigger our fans. Um, we're able to control what temperatures they come on at and off at with the sniper kit. So we can run one fan at like 180 and the second fan comes on at like 200 or whatever temperature we want. That way when James or Caroline or whoever is doing burnouts in this thing, uh, we don't overheat it hopefully. Caroline has done, she's ordered us some of these small light bars and I'm going to install it right here. I've made a little aluminum bracket here and there's some bolt holes right here where I believe the original cups or something was mounted. So I'm using that. I'm really, really excited about this. Um, seeing exactly how bright these are. I can angle them down toward the road more if I have to. So that's not gonna be a problem if they're just too bright and shining up in people's light uh, eyes. We'll figure that out. You might be wondering what this is in my hand. Well, it's an actual electric motor that goes inside this door. Do raisin lower the window and they built this car in 72 hours. You just didn't have time to replace these, I don't think. The way we've been putting them up and down is 
by pulling them up and down. Having working motors will be incredible throughout our travels. We snagged a rebuilt set off eBay for right around 60 bucks and they're a direct fit. A big thing that gets overlooked on most of our vehicles is sound deadening. But since we have both cars stripped down and we want to constantly improve our comfort for road trips and other nonsense, James and I took the time to install Dynamat. If you aren't familiar with what it does, it actually uses a process called damping, which is a process of restraining vibrations by dissipating or using the energy caused by that vibration. It's pretty easy to install and you can actually buy kits cut for the specs of your vehicle for easy installation. Since both of our cars are stock floor pans, but have some modifications, we use the 74 Beetle pan and roof kit for the Speedle and use customizable cut yourself sheets for the skull clops. And here's the difference. One more thing checked off the list. Now we gotta get this fuel tank in and hopefully never have to take it back out again. So we're getting ready to wrap up all of the wiring for the main drive system for the skull clops. And I'm kind of enjoying wiring up this alternator because it's really simple. Um, I mean, other than the fact that it's already a GM alternator, it doesn't take much to wire it up. It looks really, really good. I mean, the whole system's nice and blacked out. So it's the perfect look to complete the skull clops. I may not seem like that excited right now, but I'm gonna be really excited when it's done because uh, I'm kind of over the wiring and I always somehow get subjected to this duty. Because you are the wiring wizard. I, I don't know, I like leaving that title with Jeff. As always, wiring tends to take a lot of time, but it's a necessity. I am so proud of us for all the work we have done so far. We never seem to have a rational timetable for, well, anything, but what we've pulled off so far is pretty badass. Oh! Hey. Oh! No way. You think this car is cool? I really do. It's I. We have the plate taped into the back window of the skull clops, and uh, I'm not a big fan of that. So, Caroline got online and ordered this quick flip up hideaway kick butt plate holder except the only thing was it only came with this piece, so I had to build this bracket. I'm gonna weld this up to the chassis here, and the real Caroline is gonna help me line up the plate and make sure that it's not crooked. It looks really, really good from far away. Everything looks really good on this car from far away. Look at that. I'm holding on to a South Carolina plate. <laughs> Cause I'm the skull clops. <laughs> you powered both those lights with the one? Yeah, you've already got that spliced over and everything. Yeah, they already got power. They just don't have ground. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's, that is bright. That's pretty bright. That's gonna look pretty cool. Now you know what I need to do? I have to go work in the piss mobile. It doesn't smell any different from my other Corvette. The freak's gone out at night. The freak's gone out at night. Ow, that's in my knee. I'm just wondering what's gonna come out of here when I pull this off. I would pay money to see like a squirrel or a, a wombat or a rabbit or... A wombat? I don't know. You got this in Florida, you never know. This is your car, you know, I bought this for you. You always buy me the shittiest Corvettes you can find. It's a known fact. Red Corvette. Red? It's gotta be shitty red. So it's called Corvette Bummer. Can we just take a moment to laugh at the fact that we have worked on these windows pretty much the entirety of this build? That was dramatic. Ho ho ho! I got parts! This is the part we needed for the windows in the skull clops. Come on, baby. It's amazing what happens when you have the right parts. Okay, Will so. Will not go down any further than that? No. What's going on? What did I do? Oh, shoot. You know what? It was already down a little bit when I put the motor in. So, switches. I don't know if switches. I think the switch is bad. Or there's a bad connection. Is there a... Can you take it up? Turn it away. Oh, you know why it's doing that? Because you have a light jammed in here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh... All right, 
right, let's, let's... It's always, it's always nice to have a little light on the subject. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're so stupid. <laughs> oh, I love working on cars. <laughs> We're so dumb. My buddy has a sewing machine, and what I'm going to do is try to make a tunnel and get him to help me with the sewing machine and make a tunnel cover for the skull flops. This boot was actually made for the car for the shift knob and what I'm gonna do is try to get this sewn onto this piece of carpet so it covers up the emergency brake. I, I looked at how they how this is normally done is this is put down to the carpet with a trim ring around it. No I don't have time well, for that well, shit. I don't I what's this so the way we're going to attach this to the carpet is we're going to hem the edge and then we're going to sew it down to the carpet. So we just trimmed the seam allowance. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to just put a lock stitch in here so these don't unravel. And uh, then we'll put this down so it doesn't have any bulk when we do the hem. And then we'll go ahead and sew it and then we'll sew it to the carpet. Dude, you are the man. You just saved the day. Well, that doesn't look bad. It looks fantastic. Wait till I put it on. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> I love that I'm drawing this in dust, but the idea for the skull clops is we want to tell the story like we did in the video. So the best way to do that is by pictures and a little bit of like a little blurb to go with them. So right now <laughs> I'm drawing out of the dust that's on the skull clops how we're going to lay it out. So I'm going to have like Story of the Skull Clops at the top, because I want to be as simple and legible for people to read so that whether you're at the show seeing it or you're in some random state at the gas station, you see this card, you want to know a little bit more about it, this is a good way to see it and see what it's all about and why people should care about it. So that it also will have like a barcode here so people can scan it and it goes right to the YouTube so they can see what we're doing as we're posting. Uh, so that's kind of the concept. It's going to look a lot better than <laughs> drawn in the dust when I actually put it onto Photoshop, but this is kind of what we're, what we're thinking. Drive, second, first. Yeah, you're right, we're there. You know the best thing about sushi? <laughs> so usually when you can have your distributor and you're putting it in you can bump the motor over and it'll drop in uh, into the oil pump there's a little keyhole or keyway that the distributor needs to go into the oil pump uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull the distributor and i'm going to try to line that up on the same tooth here and hopefully i get lucky <laughs> That thing just feels like it's bottoming. Like, like. Hello, my name is James and my favorite color is silver today because this bottle of Vaveline motor oil, VR1 to be exact, is silver. I thought you were gonna say because you're silver. What? I thought you were gonna say because you're silver. Because I'm silver? Yeah, you're a silver fox, supposedly. Where is this coming from? We were talking about Ann Anstead. That's kind of where my head was at. Ann Anstead wished he looked as good as me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining you saying that to his face because I know you would. Uh, you wish you looked as good as me, bro. Bro. Jordan! <laughs> How have you missed every single one? I never miss! Liberty Bibberty. I'm so Actually, glad this windshield is so dirty I can't see your face right now. I love sarcasm. It's like punching people in the face, but with words. Or have we not done a deal with them yet? So funny. We will not bow down to corporate America. <laughs> hey, listen, in all seriousness, you need to use VR1 Vaveline motor oil in your old car because it has the proper amount of zinc in this oil and it really, really works good and it protects the engine really, really well. So next time you do an oil change, go to your Napa Auto Store and pick up six quarts of this Vaveline VR1. What if they have a Volkswagen? Okay, four quarts. Two. 
two quarts. If you got a Volkswagen, Three. I don't care. Run this shit in your lawnmower, man. This is what you need, okay? <laughs> Fifth time is a charm. Fifth time is Jordan. That was the worst one yet. Well, we played with this distributor as long as we could until we had to call in reinforcements, Mike from Landspeed. Turns out that the oil pump shaft that the distributor sits in actually had a little bit of play inside the motor, so it was able to move around, therefore misaligning every single time we decided to drop the distributor in. Really? Yep. Okay, hold on. I love you, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> You guys didn't even want to put the pin back in it. You, you refused to believe that I could put that in there. Something was wrong with this distributor. I still refused to believe Before he touched no, it. No, it's like the sword and the stone. I am the chosen one. <laughs> you dick. Really? Well, that's how it would, I mean, I put it in, didn't I? Yes, you did. After getting over feeling like total idiots that we couldn't get that distributor in, it was time to program and calibrate the sniper kits. Once all that was set up, we went back to finishing all of the small cosmetic touches like the interior, putting the seats back in, so we get ready to take this thing for its first drive. Since I was on quite the roll with carpeting in the Skullclops, I decided to move over to the Speedle and knock that floor pan out as well. There really isn't much of a science behind how we do carpet here at HH Wheels. I just buy a few yards of black automotive grade stretch fabric. I use some Permatex headliner adhesive to secure it all down and then I just trim it as I need and that's about it. Since I had some pretty good momentum going on the Speedle, I just decided to stay on it and keep cranking the work out. Have a shifter again. How many thousands did that cost? Alex actually got it for me. Brand new, it's like $600 shifter. It was used for three bills? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was having trouble with the big bus shifter. I don't think I've ever not have trouble with it, but I was talking about possibly getting a vintage speed one. Vintage speed will custom make bus size ones for bugs. The problem is the little shaft that's in the bottom is different size for both a bus and a bug. So that's why I was having the problem. Um, and then Alex found this on like Facebook marketplace or something like that. And I was like, all right, fine. And I traded it out and I love this shifter. I have had no mischiefs. I've had no issues. Once you get it dialed in, you get it dialed in. You can also adjust to how short you want your throw and everything. It's all in here and it's all really nice billet aluminum. So I can't really complain. Although it was three days late, the passenger seat for the Speedle had finally arrived, and honestly, I felt a little less pressure now. I genuinely thought we were either going to SEMA with one seat, or I was going to have to install one in Vegas. James has killed it on the brackets yet again. They look great. They're going to fit perfectly for these seats. He had to do a lot of modifying. I feel kind of bad, but they're finished now, painted, completely dry. Now I'm going to go pop at least the driver's seat in the car because I have to take this thing to the tint shop tomorrow morning, and I haven't even driven it or anything yet, so I might try to give it a good little test drive tonight. Thankfully, the tin shop is literally in walking distance from us, but still, uh, it's getting real. It's getting real, real. <laughs> Did you tell everybody how badass I am making those brackets for you? Yes, actually, I sang your praises. I was just hoping you'd see it in the video and not have to ask, but God. <laughs> Jeez. We're usually pretty good about putting on a face, especially when we're stressed out, overwhelmed, or honestly just over it, but at this time I was really, really struggling, more than I'd like to admit, until it came to the point where I just broke when I just didn't have anything left in me. Man, I'm just trying to keep it together, but I'm like so stressed out with everything we got going on and all the small details and making everything right. and. Um, I don't know. It's probably crazy we put ourselves under this, but... Well, it's another day. Um, I'm definitely in a better mind space than I was yesterday. Still exhausted, <laughs> but in a better mind space. I could totally cut this out of the video, but it is true, like, and it's real. Like, this, this happens where I just get so overwhelmed and overstimulated that... I just can't handle it. I just kind of break, and when it kind of comes to that moment, I just need to stop. 
Gosh, I don't know why I'm so nervous, but if this goes well, we're going in the right direction. <gasps> Just got the call. The Speedle is done at the tin shop. I'm going to walk over there, pick it up, drive it back. Now that we have some fresh tint on the windows, I snagged James off of working on the skull clops for just a brief moment to help me put these pop outs back in. We caught like one thread. <laughs> but Better than no thread. Best two out of three, I'll take it. Very cool. Windows look good. Huh? Windows look good. The tint? New tint. It makes a world of difference. Yep, just weird enough for SEMA. <laughs> this is true. So the first drive with the Speedle didn't go that smoothly because there are a few things I need to kind of figure out what I'm having an issue with. First being it's not running really that great right now. Um, I mean, it's not bad, it'll idle just fine. But upon driving it and warming it up, I don't know if I have either a vapor lock issue, the carbs are out of sync, I fouled a plug, I'm not sure, so I'm going to kind of run a couple tests and check these spark plug wires and see if something's going wrong because it seemed to have a little bit of a miss. So I fiddle farted around with that motor for a little while trying to figure out what could be wrong. So after kind of looking it over, talking to Jeff, Jeff was like, sounds like you have a clogged idler jet. So I was like, great. Took it out, cleaned the living heck out of it. It runs, it runs really good. I don't have a miss anymore. It looks like all of the exhaust ports are heating up pretty evenly. Let me clean up this mess, put my air cleaners back on, and we'll go drive it and see if it's any better. say that's awesome it runs so much better the last piece of the puzzle to these carpets are some silk plates <laughs> i literally have never had silk plates in this car oh let's see how these look they're super nice i mean i just thought if you're gonna spend the money to get silk plates you might as well get nice ones because these are really going to get a lot of traffic. But damn, they look cool. So I feel like I need to sit down to film this because this is something super cool. So Rob from Landspeed, you guys may or may not have seen him. He's been in a few videos and he's just like the total class clown around here basically. He came by yesterday and looked at my car and was like, ah, this is nice. And like really, really enjoyed what he saw, like the, the four point cage. He was like, I have the most perfect thing for you. I will bring it by tomorrow. Tomorrow is today. He brought it by, and this is truly one of the coolest things I've ever been given. He brought this for me. <laughs> this is a shift knob. It's a beetle shift knob. How freaking cool is this thing? I, I have to put it on now. It's so cool, but I like almost don't want to open it because it's just, I mean, this is, this is old. He said he had this on his toolbox for like 30 years. I feel really honored that he wanted to give it to me. At this point, it feels like the problems are endless. <laughs> so upon driving it earlier, like really driving it and testing out the suspension, the front end feels amazing. Rear feels good until it bottoms out. So basically what I'm gonna have to do, although I put brand new gas shocks on, I'm gonna have to change those off and put on my old coilovers because unfortunately, Whoever hacked this up before cut the bump stop off of this for some stupid reason. So basically what's happening is this, this arm right here, when I hit a bump, because there's so much play in that shock, it's banging right here. It's bottoming out completely. And it literally sounds like you're trying to split my car in two. <laughs> so that's no bueno. And I do not have the time or means right now to fix this. We have made it to the end with this beetle, which means the time has come to ship it off to Vegas. I want to take a brief moment to thank our sponsor of this video, 303 Car Care. 
Before sending it off, it needs a good old bath with none other than some 303 car wash. We are using their new Ultra Suds Ceramic Car Wash that not only does get sudsy, like explained in the name, but it also boosts the ceramic protection on this beetle. Even if your car isn't protected yet, it helps create its own standalone protection to help prevent buildup of bugs, dirt, and all of the grime you pick up along the way. It's the perfect level of protection for this beetle's trip across the country. You can snag our favorite 303 products at the link in the description, and thank you to 303 Car Care for supporting all of us here at HH Wheels. I'm so nervous. This beetle is heading out, or I'm just heading out in this beetle, whatever, to take this beetle to the shipper, and it's heading to Las Vegas. You nervous? This is going to be the first time this car has ever been out of my possession, ever, I think. I'm just nervous. I'm excited. I'm mostly excited. But it's like excited nerves, you know? All peace will be restored when I get to see it again. So is it ready for SEMA? It's as ready as it's gonna be. I don't know why, but it really feels like I'm never gonna see it again. I'm probably gonna feel like this until we get there, or at least until I lay my eyes on it, or I know that it's in Vegas, which I think it's supposed to be in Vegas in three days or four days. I don't know. We'll see. I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do with myself. Like, I'm literally like, what do I do with my hands? The speedle is off. Now we have one more vehicle to check off the list. If you told me three weeks ago that I would be here right now putting the seat in this car on time and being able to go out on a test drive in this car, freaking amazing, really. Uh, I'm dumbfounded on how much stuff we've gotten done in the past three weeks. Yeah, to have two cars done in this amount of time, this short of time, uh, I'm flabbergasted. We, there's really nothing we can't do. Man, skull clops back together. Cleaned up, putting some sponsors on the sides. Now we got to go out and test drive it and make sure it doesn't overheat and spill all its guts all over the place. But for the most part, there it is. One of the coolest things I got at the swap meet, because you know I'm always looking for the good deal, is the Skull Clops mirror. Yeah, that's right. Skulls and crossbones. Bones, skulls. It's a perfect mirror for Skull Clops. Well, there might be a reason why it was 20 bucks. Oh. see the car right now but we're having some serious issues well let's see what the oh sounds like they're not running very good oh that's not good Yeah, this is where we're at. Just test drove the skull cloths for the first time for our road trip across country. Those snipers not quite working exactly the way we want them to work. I'm really tired. I'm letting these two brains figure it out because they actually know how to figure this crap out. And I'm having the hardest time understanding these things. I mean, I'm no sniper expert, but basically what's happening is I think when you are going down the road, the snipers are literally computers so what's happening is they're trying to learn and they're trying to be obviously more fuel efficient and adjust timing and i think what's happening is when you're going down the road it's trying to adjust timing and it's air fuel ratio to be more efficient and give you more performance and something's not right whether our timing's already wrong to begin with which i think is quite a good possibility or we have some sort of setting wrong or we're set too low on something. Okay, so now we're trying this HEI distributor. What we did was we changed the gear off of the Mallory distributor, distributor onto the HEI distributor. And we were able to seat it in here. Uh, there happened to be that 20 thousandths off on the inside of the gear and it wouldn't allow it to go down on the, um, the oil pump shaft. Without further ado, Alex is going to 
Fire this bad boy up. I think you leave it right here for now. I think your settings are pretty close. Your, uh, we have a little bit of IAC action, which is, so it means our idle's pretty close. Um, your timing is close. We should be good enough to get it running. Let's fix your fuel leak because that will definitely affect the way it runs. Um, and see how it runs in the morning. So right now what Rob and I are doing is polishing up the skull clops. And what I've been doing is going over the whole car with a 5,000 pad on the DA. Right, Rob? Yeah, wet. And wet, really wet. If you notice I was using the squirt bottle. Part of the car that hasn't been polished yet is really hazy. And that's what you want. We're trying to take a little bit of the dirt and crap and uh, just smooth the car out a little bit. And it should give it a good shine, I think, actually. You notice what Rob's doing here. Holy smokes. 1-800, see yourself in the paint. I should get about another, I don't know, eight, 10 miles an hour. Now the key is to keep it from being upside down in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> I got these fresh Continental tires on here are going to keep me right on the road, brother. That's between you and the maker when you're driving this thing. What a mess you just made on my new carpet. Pretty solid. Pull the red pin, pull Which up is, and forward. Okay, here's one for you. I've never seen this before, ever. Anyway, just, just watch and tell me what you guys think. You ever seen anything like that? Have you that. ever seen anything like that? Yeah. Like you can feel the pressure and then it slowly moves. Yeah. Okay, you gotta go left. Go. Going left. You have air still coming out, Alex? That's gotta be getting easier for you. Oh, super easy. I'm, I'm hold on, hold moving. on, hold on. Whoa, 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 let it settle. Fluid's like maxing out now. Good, like it's, it's moving air. Back up. Earlier when I went into the parts store to get the uh, wheel bearing I needed, the guy asked me, he's like, how do you get so jacked? He's like, he's like, is it all from working on cars? I was like, yeah, I didn't get a chance to go to the gym on the regular, so I guess so. At first glance, I thought maybe we were pushing some air through the new control valve we installed, but something just didn't seem right. What? These two aren't the same size, are they? The top ones are not the same size. The, those are the same size, yeah. Okay, I think they're backwards, because one side has a designated like fitment, like you can't cross them, but one side does. Yeah. So I think you're backwards. Now that we swapped those lines and corrected that small mishap <laughs> on James's <laughs> part, I mean our part, it was time to bring our storyboard vision to life. In bringing this car back to life, we think it's extremely important to continue to tell the story of the Skull Clops. For those that have never seen the car online before, we wanted to create an interactive piece to display its journey. The moment we have all been counting down the weeks for is finally here. The last drive before it ships off to Vegas. It's running pretty good. Uh, it's even making more vacuum for some reason. I guess, you know, the timing is just way off on this thing. Uh, I, I have good brakes. I have good power brakes right now, which is yeah, it's impressive. So, what'd you think? It's really good. Yeah? Yeah, like, uh, it's it's making vacuum. Like imagine we, that. We have brakes. Um, imagine, well, we did sort of partially have brakes. We just didn't have good brakes, so. Yeah, but we have good. power brakes. I mean, it's working like it's supposed to. Skullclops! <laughs> Look, 188 on the temperature. The oil pressure is fantastic. This is good. Though we may not be frequent patrons of our local cars and coffee, especially with what we're doing lately, at least when we show up, we show up with something cool. Oh yeah, it's something different every time, right? <laughs> Oh, 
So do you think you can do this? You can get us back home without killing us? Oh, am I going to drive? Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm really, really, really impressed. You're what? I'm impressed because I'm happy to see so many people like this car because we've seen it, you know, talked about online, but we've never brought it to anything until now. Okay, in and out. There we go. So you're saying I should put the seatbelt on, huh? This is going to be a nightmare. Cracker Barrel be a nightmare, too. At least we'll roll out in style. Okay, we're going to go to the Cracker Barrel. Let's see I'm just so proud of us. We started making YouTube videos because we thought it would be fun to document what we were already working on, and now it's led to us here. You guys watching and supporting us turn our dreams into a reality. It's kind of crazy where life takes you when you throw your heart and time into your passions. So how are you feeling? Tired. Very tired. Well, this is the end of it. We're, it's just party time after this. Let's go with that. We get the car on the, on the truck and then it's just party time. Uh, I'm so ready to have these cars. We're both of these cars out of the way. We got the Speedle gone. Now it's time for the Skull Clops to go. The skull clops. I'm tired, dude. I'm so <laughs> I'm tired. I'm so tired. She's so tired, She's so tired guys. I'm so tired. What are we gonna do about this? Get some sleep. You gonna get some sleep before we get to Vegas? I hope so. Holy crap. How do you feel? I'm just blown away that it actually is on a truck right now and heading out of town to our destination. That's amazing. Yeah, we'll see it in Vegas. Now we have four days to figure out what we forgot. <laughs> Specifically bought an air tag because I was so scared of losing her keys. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea, I'm scared. It's I'm totally like, okay. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm just as excited to see it now as when I saw it finished last time. I'm so excited. Thank you for taking such good care of my baby while we were gone. I was a bad ass, but I got through it. <laughs> <laughs> I was not even the slightest bit worried. I was terrified. <laughs> I literally haven't had any time to drive it since we finished it. It was finish it and send it, literally. We're gonna stop the gas station first. Oh yeah, I need gas bad. You want me to drive? No, absolutely not. Be sure. I'm 100% sure. Okay, let's just stop at the gas station, would you? I'm so happy. I missed it so much. This is a long ways from home for this car and you. I mean, not for us, but for the car. It's like a total beach buggy and there's no beach. You know where we're going? Kinda. Your seat belt on, kids. Well, I know we're not gonna run out of gas. Definitely not gonna run out of gas. We are forever indebted to Evelina from Adrenaline Junkies. She made it possible to get both cars to SEMA on time and keep them safe in the meantime. If you're in the Vegas area looking for an epic off-road adventure or many other things that she offers, please go check out Adrenaline Junkies. Thank you so much, Evelina. We love you and all of her info will be linked down below in the description. I feel like I'm in one of those little yellow and red plastic cars that the little kids play in, doing 75 miles an hour right now. This is sketchy as hell. Thank God we have a roll bar in this thing. Just don't hit any big pops, okay? First car is parked. That took a hot minute, but they got it all figured out. This is crazy. We've gone to SEMA two years prior to this, obviously this being our third, and we have two cars. Are we crazy or what? We had one wrench 
and one dream. Many dreams, many wrenches, but you get the point. We did it. And look what we're parked next to. This thing is so cool. I've seen it on Instagram, but it's so cool to see it in person. SEMA is of course big for both of our vehicles, but we got to experience something very special with the Skull Clops while we were here. I'm really, really nervous right now because uh, Ian Russell is right there, and he was one of the main builders of Skull Clops, and I'm just like freaking out. He's like here, and this is, uh, he's, he's like one of my hero builders, you know, that I've watched on TV for the last 10 years. And uh, we have a car that he had his hands on, and, now he's really interested in hearing what we did to it and see if we can talk about it. <laughs> what do you think? Well, it looks a little worse for wear compared to the last time I saw it, but I guess the weather got to it, huh? Yeah. My whole concept with this car was to show it as found. Because I think that tells an interesting story also. It's kind of like the patina fad with all the rat rods. Oh I know. It's the real deal. It's fiberglass. Right. It's, it's just okay. interesting because it doesn't really showcase much of my talent. Because I worked underneath the car primarily. I did the air suspension. So from that, you know the uniqueness of the suspension. So you don't really see a lot on airbags, especially 10 years ago. So I figured that out. And it worked. You know, it wouldn't handle like a Corvette should, but it laid down. So, you know, I helped with the mechanical and just a lot of sand and, you know, body work. So it's kind of it. I know the effort that you went through in getting the airbag system on here because I painstakingly had to, had to take it out. <laughs> well, I remember welding on that corner especially. And, you know, you got camera guys. There's five cameras on you the whole time. And I'm welding and I'm welding and the camera guy's like, you're going to burn the bag. You're going to burn the bag because <laughs> they're welded in, as you saw. Yeah. Like, hey, man, I'm in a rush here. It's like, you're going to melt the bag. And sure enough, I popped that rear bag. We had to replace it before oh, the reveal. Okay. And but, how did you do that? Because, man, everything was like welded together. Oh, solid. It was just, again, we built this literally start to finish with a timer, 72 hours. That's my other question. You know, TV. That was real. That was brutal. That's why I like to use that term. Our whole team was trauma bonded by the Car Warriors experience. The Challengers did one car. We did back to back to back to back. Week, 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 week. So the eight, the ten episodes that right you did in, in season row. one are all week in a row. And if you watch the series closely, you'll see us all get sick and then slowly wither. And you see with this one, you had uh, two different factions of the team, right? So Scott is an artist, a designer, and he's like, look at the sculpting, look at the uniqueness. Here's Scott now. <laughs> there he is. Awesome, How you doing, man? How are you? This is the guy that designed the entire nose of the car. <laughs> the amazing nose well, I was just of told the how it would absorb water, right? So oh, yeah. you know what it was built on. The materials that we had available were not good to do this. The techniques, the stuff that we that we did, sure, that's fine. The MDF, that's what we had to work with. So to redo something like that, you'd have to use a better material. How did the Cyclops morph into the Skull Clops? Rhino. So Rhino. put a ton of skulls on it. And what an awkward name! Right. <laughs> it just rolls off the tongue. No, but it's it's cool. It sticks. It, it goes with the car. Well, I don't even know if I fit in there. Because I see so much shit. Oh no. Well, now that the headliner's out, I fit. Yeah. Yeah, we don't fit very well yeah. in this thing. <laughs> well, from what it became, I mean, that's the day it was finished. And then uh, there it is, abandoned and left for dead. Yeah, so A lot of people are like, oh, you paused it and you did this, and they took breaks. I go. The only time that we ever got a break is if equipment broke. Like if the compressor, the remember the compressor, compressor went down once, and, yeah, and they're like, all right, we have to stop for that. <laughs> right. But other than that, it was legit. The timer didn't stop. My favorite is that sound bite of you being like, oh, a Corvette. Oh, a Corvette. <laughs> well, I'm, that's what I mean. It's like, what am I going to do? With, yeah, Scott's the you? same thing. What are we going to do with that? It's like Corvettes are kind of Corvettes, right? Yeah. Well, I want to personally thank you guys for doing this. Uh, you know, and. I'm kind of glad that it, it was in our price range. Uh, <laughs> you know, we only buy junky cars and bring them back to life. We don't buy anything good. You know, we, we buy crap. Well, you didn't change that trend. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was so great getting to chat with Scott and Ian about the Skull Clops. It's such a comical yet rewarding moment we get to experience, getting a little bit of the behind the scenes on the build, and also hearing that despite the strenuous deadline that they were under, they have such great memories of producing such a cool car. But there is one more perspective we were able to get on the Skull Clops as well. This is a paint job in probably 12 hours I did it. and. No pre-cleared. I mean, this was just cleared, shoved out the door. Normally, I'd pinstripe it, sand it down, do all kinds of other stuff. We didn't have time for it. Every single paint job, we just made up on the fly. This is my favorite right here. No, I love this little, this is the coolest steering wheel ever. Though. This thing's badass. So who did, was that on the shelf or was that made? That was on the shelf. So and, and then I painted that. it. And then these are, this is used to be an O, so we just, made to cross it out and it's a hell wheel <laughs> <laughs> didn't notice that huh nice. but no this was this was a fun one i remember the other team that we all had windows and our spray booths and i was laying on the ground painting these as i look up i could see the whole other team watching me paint skulls it was pretty funny i'm like hey don't you guys got a car to build too right you know what? i don't think i ever sat in the car you know what i might have sat in the car but um it wasn't for very long <laughs> well, let's get in there and fire it up at least. So, that's Brad. Um. Well, you remember when I stayed up all night that night thinking about this car? I told you I, I lost sleep all night last night thinking about this car. I do. I was manifesting in my mind what I wanted this car to do, and then I, I wanted to make connections with the people that built it because I'm such huge fans of theirs, and I just wanted to be able to make connections, shake their hand, tell them thanks, and we got to do that. You know, not one of them doesn't appreciate it, though, either. Yeah. They, they, every single one of them so far has looked at this car and said, wow, that brings back really great memories, and they're just like, wow, we did this in 72 hours. They want to see the car again. You know, they're just, they're not like, oh, okay, let's go see these guys. We have a YouTube channel that probably just did this to get a rise and meet us. No, they're all very receptive to what we have to say. And they love that we brought it back to life. And they love that we have it, which is really, really cool. Yeah. It's so neat. I, uh, I think it's a job well done. To you guys at home, thank you for sticking with us through our first SEMA show journey. Thanks for watching us grow as builders through both the Speedle and the Skull Clops. And here is the final look at both cars. Get up on your feet, this is a shakedown. Order up that beat just like a takeout. Show me you got soul inside those new shoes. And you can rock and roll with the attitude. So good, so just the way you like it Just the way you like it So good, so fresh Y'all the new MC, you got the remix we have decided to divert from our original plans of road tripping both cars home from Vegas. Instead, we have decided to attend Hot Rod Power Tour West with the Skull Clops in just one month. Stay tuned to see if this TV prop of a Corvette can survive this long journey. Thanks for watching. <laughs>